If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 45 minutes, Adam, Justin, and I have some fun conversation before we get into you. the questions. Uh, we start off with, uh, we had a sad testimonial. Oh, yeah. Apparently, our programs are too effective. So depressing. <laughs> so effective, it's creating divorces. We're yeah. homewreckers. Uh, then we have some uh, fun talk about rabbit sex and dolphin orgies. We got to watch cool videos. Thanks, Doug. These are real. Uh, they happen all the time. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about cordyceps and Adam's libido. I think it might be helping him out. Uh, I mentioned Four Sigmatic, uh, who has a very high-quality uh, version of cordyceps. Mm-hmm. In fact, if you go to four, spell it out, F O U R, sigmatic.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump without a space, you'll get a discount. We talk about Justin's trip to Las Vegas yeah. to attend the CES convention. What does that stand for? Bunch CES. of nerds. I don't even know what that stands yeah, for. Yeah, consumer electronic something. There you go. Science. <laughs> yeah, science. Uh, science. <laughs> oh, we also mentioned Brain FM. We were talking about meditation. They had some cool meditation it's devices. It's been a while since we talked about those guys, man. I love that product. Yeah. Uh, if you go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump, you can get yourself hooked up with a subscription to Brain FM. We also talked about the creepy transhumanism booth at the CES. Justin convention. was scared to go in. Yeah. He has a microchip in his penis now. Ugh. And then we talk about Thrive Market. We opened up a box sent by them with some cool products. No also, food this time, guys. We're also sponsored by Thrive Market. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here is what you'll get. One month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and free shipping. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, will we ever do a pure water fast? Um, and do we have any tips Funny for it? Funny you mentioned that. In fact, when this episode airs, we will all be starting- Right now. A 48, if you're a pussy, to 72-hour fast <laughs> Dick. <laughs> starting today. Mm. Then the next question, uh, why do we interview CrossFitters if we're against CrossFit? Or are we against CrossFit? Or is this particular person super sensitive and being a pussy right now? Because Ooh. we're not against CrossFit. Ooh. We just think their programming sucks. Stung. Yep. Next question was, do we have any tips for people with shin splints? It's funny we haven't answered this question before because it's so common The fix is actually quite simple. Find out in this episode. Finally, last question. This particular person is having trouble with the last 4 to 5% of their stubborn body fat. What suggestions do we have for them? Punch it. We give them the secret answer in this episode. Also, this month, it's January. Time to get in shape. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Get your year planned out get your year have a plan mapped out Ooh, i like that one i like that i like what you <laughs> yeah. did there if you enroll in any of our bundles now bundles are more two or more of our maps programs put together and programmed to work synergistically for example if you get the build your butt bundle you'll get maps anabolic and maps aesthetic with a mod that shows you how to use them to build impressive glutes like justin or the sexy cool. athlete bundle where we have maps aesthetic and mass performance programmed together to make you or to help you become an athlete with lots of sex appeal. Yeah. Why did you say like Adam, like you said like Justin? Um, mm. I can't think of one of these bundles that's like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Or if you're one of those people, and I know there's some of you listening, that's just super serious. If you're one of those people that's like, look, Sal, I don't want to fuck around. I'm trying to get in shape here. I'm trying to be awesome. And I don't want to worry about it for the entire year. Just I, tell me what to do. Yeah, don't yeah. sell me some bullshit. Give I me want the playbook. The answer. Give me what is going to be my solution. No holds barred solution. This is what you get. The MAPS Super Bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Anywhere, and MAPS Prime, all put together. It's one year of exercise programming all set up for you. Now, if you enroll in any of those bundles, you'll get a free t-shirt now some of these t-shirts are worth up to five million dollars most of them are worth a lot lot less they're special edition limited edition know what that one looks like (laughs) most of what i just said is false Mm. some of it is true figure out for yourself but if you do want one of those free t-shirts all you gotta do is enroll in a bundle just go to mindpumpmedia.com so i got a sad uh sad message the other day what do you mean a sad testimonial another one like a like a like a, it's a testimonial 
but it's sad. You know what I mean? So this woman... Is that uh, like a good sad? Like it, there's well, a good ending in the story? So this woman writes to me and she's like, um, <clears throat> I'm leaving my husband after being married for 16 years. Whoa. Because what? of Mind Pump. What? Yeah. yeah, so I'm like, what? What did, what did we do? Well, you, so, you sending her stage photos of me? So I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? So I kind of felt bad. I'm like, well, you know, what happened or whatever. And she seemed to fall in love with us. Well, yeah. she used to work out wrong and uh, and do all kinds of weird diets and stuff. And then she followed uh, our program, MAPS. Mm. And she lost a lot of weight, got really fit, and uh, realized that she could do much better. So she left her husband. <laughs> so Sad and bright So I'm like, on, on one hand, I'm like, you, you got your goals. On the other hand, right. I'm like, fuck, we, yeah. broke another, we broke up another marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Another one? Another family. Is this happening a lot oh, to you right now? You're getting DMs a lot? I feel like it. You know, We're home wreckers, is what you're saying. That's the, Well, here's the thing I want to convey to people is if you're married or you have a significant other and you're going to do maps by yourself, Ooh, y- it's prob- you, probably not the move. Let them know. Let them yeah. know. Look, tell your, this is what you say to your boyfriend or girlfriend. Say, say, listen, say, I value you. I love you. Yeah. And at this moment, we like, find. Listen, we, I'm going to change. Yeah, we we are on an, an a relatively equivalent basis of hotness. Like our hotness <laughs> is kind of the same. Yeah. But what's about to happen over the next few months is my hotness level is going to explode. Mm. And when that happens, I'm going to realize that I can get with someone much hotter. It, so it's like you a sh- metamorphosis. So you should do this with me. Yeah. And together we can elevate our value. Right. Because these are sad messages. I don't want to read that shit. We don't want that to happen. I'm not trying to hear No. You know that map. We want to elevate both. Yeah. What I want to hear is I want to hear me and my spouse both did maps and now we're both having sex five times a day or something like that. Yeah. Not, I I left. Yeah. Because I got fit. Like we're just banging like rabbits. Like rabbits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ever seen a rabbit bang? Then we have maps kids. Do Do rabbits really bang a lot? I, yeah, they do. That's or they where just the have a lot of babies. comes from. Dude, have you ever seen? <laughs> and they do it like with like rapid hips, just. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's crazy. A lot of animals. That's how they do it. If you watch a cow, how he does it. If you watch dogs, cows use rapid hips. Rap, yeah, they they all they all like you got to get yeah, it in. Yeah, like, like it's a little bit. It's of not a, like yeah, this yeah, sex very is, white sex is, in the sex background. Is like for a cow, when a cow has sex, it's like. Five seconds, dude. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. They get it in real quick. They penetrate and they. <laughs> oh, this is great, Doug. That you oh found. Oh my god. It. Yes. B- here bunnies we go. having sex. But, this Doug, I'm not trying to watch. Sniffing. What? Oh, oh, oh shit! shit. Oh shit! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that tail that's, not that, that's not that fast. <laughs> oh, you just tackled her. <laughs> that's it. It's over. That's over. That's wow. it's that fast. Dude. He's done. Well, he'll he'll hit it again. Watch. I feel like that's oh again. Yeah. yeah. No, no, so no, he's like a little champion. No, no, he no, goes for more. They they go for all day. No, so it's just like, a he, here he comes. It's he's just coming. a bunch of he's making a second move. It's like uh, just I think that's it. Dude. Lots they, of they do it one time. One time. Psh, there you go. Oh, no, I, yep, here oh, he goes. oh, oh you're goes. wrong. You're oh, oh no, no, no no no. He's, he's you know what he's trying to do right now. He's trying to warm her up. He's trying to be cool with her. He's like listen, honey, I gotta listen. I know that was a little aggressive. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna come in a little slower. How come time. her ears are so far down and back? Does that is she signifying that she likes She's it? She's like, ah oh, man. Do you know? Did you guys know that uh, dolphins have? Um, oh, oh, there, there he goes. goes. There he I goes again. You. Wow. Yes, it's impressive. He is a little champion. Yeah. Did you guys know dolphins have orgies? I've heard that. Yep. I heard they're freaks. It's just like one of those dad jokes. No, 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 no. no. They're they're <laughs> there's no <laughs> I, listen. <laughs> I make a lot of jokes. You know that but I never, of orgies? I never joke around about orgies. Yeah. They, Polyamorous? They actually swim in pods. Uh, I think that's the term for multiple dolphins. Pods? And, yeah, pods. They swim a bunch of them together, and it becomes a clusterfuck. Wow. Literally. 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 Yeah. And gangbang. Wow. Yeah, so they'll be like a, they'll be like a female like dolphin. Everybody's running in a train. And there's a bunch of like male dolphins. How long do dolphins live? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know this? I don't know. We're getting into Well, you, the, you know about their, their sex their sexual life. But hell. Yeah. Because that's interesting. I don't give a fuck how long they live. I, I want to know what they do that hole with that hole. You would. Yeah. You, are, you are that more likely hole? to Google. I'm more likely to Google like, oh, they do stuff with the blowhole. Huh? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Wow. But I do. But here's some more that's interesting. Kinky. Here's some more. So dolphins happen to be one of my favorite animals. Here's one of my other interest, an in, another interesting facts. Why are they such? Why are they a favorite animal? Because they're intelligent. They're very intelligent. How long do they live? Uh, 60 years. Oh, not that long. Not that longer. 
That's a striped dolphin. Yeah, wow, 55 to 60 years. That's not bad. So here's another interesting fact about dolphins. Dolphins will seek out puffer fish to get high off of them. No way. Like, yes. How? They, I believe... It is weird that we have animal instincts to like go after stuff like this, right? W- Even when you think about how we've found shrooms and we found a lot of these these drug marijuana, like how did that happen? Because mm. like one day you're some, just like running, somebody ate one, accident. walking walking yeah. through the forest. You're constantly shoving things in your mouth, and then one time you're like, "Whoa, that was fun!" Yep. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Doug. He pulled up the dolphin orgy. Whoa. <laughs> Might as well add to the uh, damn. Look at that to the rabbit banging. I told you. Why yeah. is Why does it say that Doug subscribes to this already? I don't know. That's weird. Doug's already <laughs> viewed this video. Yeah. Yeah, you might also like <laughs> whale humps. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, shit so is yeah, you're, no, animals do seek out altered states of consciousness. It's just something that animals do. And I think what probably happened with humans is because we're constantly, because humans are, we're different see, than most hear, animals and that we can eat lots of different things to survive, probably because, you know, the food was so scarce. So we probably saw a mushroom growing out of some poop or something, and we're like, "Yeah, I mean, I'm going to try this. Yeah. Eat it. <laughs> yeah. Eat it. And you're like, I didn't die. So everybody's like, cool. Everybody eats it. And then like two hours later, you invent Well, religion. there's a lot of species that have uh, seeked like hallucinogenic type uh, foods, right? Even birds, I've heard, have uh, certain foods that they go and they eat just specifically to get high. Oh, I've heard that too. What yeah. is it though that gets them high? It, I'm trying it, to remember. Is it like opiate seeds or some shit? Some like- kind of seed, yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't think that. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think those exist. Yeah, yeah, opiate yeah, seed? Yeah, yeah. Or like going along with what it. What is it? What is it? Mommy, can you give me some fruit from the Vicodin tree? <laughs> <laughs> some kind of mold maybe? I don't know. Well, I mean, opiate grows like wheat, right? It looks like wheat, doesn't it? Look like oh, opium. Opium, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's opium yeah. is poppy. What? Poppy. poppy. There you go. Yeah, Thank you. Doug. The poppy seed is back in Doug's day. They smoke. Po- they. That's smoke what opium. I was looking for, Doug. I eat Thank those you. muffins all the time. And poppy. I get nothing. From no, them. I really think I think that you're right. I think the birds are, and I think it's poppy seeds. It's not opiate seed. It was fucking. Nuts. That's what I was looking for. Was poppy seeds. <laughs> yeah. Poppy yeah. seeds it are how you, that. Yeah. Poppy seeds are how you make opium. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have so heard that, I think it is that. Look it up, Doug. What are the how do birds please, get high? Please. That's the Google. Yeah, that's how you Google that. We're, we're totally using our Google. I time. feel like you could well, open up like a seed company and sell them, and just because you're like and be Hispanic, so you can sell them as poppy seeds. You know what I mean? What? Like poppy? Like poppy. don't they say that? Yeah, poppy. Oh, poppy. That is, that is awful. Seeds. That was, awful. That was a stretch. That was that a awful, terrible. Yeah, you get, stretch. You're is that not going to work? We're going to give you. Not... We're going to give you a mulligan for that one. <laughs> right. you know oh, what? A what? You're going to get a mulligan. There you go with the sports reference. Yeah, I know. What's right? a mulligan? It's, yeah, it's okay. It's more, a we're going to let that one go. More, more interesting facts is uh, I don't know if I've told this on the podcast. The fungus cordyceps. You know where a lot of it grows as a parasite on on a type of caterpillar. Yeah. Literally grows off the caterpillar until the caterpillar dies. Right, turns into like a zombie caterpillar. And then that's and then that's the course. No, that's the ant. Remember that that zombie that's ant right. that it also takes that's over. Right. Look yeah. at look at birds get stoned by rubbing ants on their wings. What? I was way off. That is bizarre. It was it's way. Yeah, it's right. called anting. I knew they did something, but that was not what I thought. Dude, how fucked up would that be if you were the ant? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, why do they keep rubbing me all over them? Yeah. Like, imagine if there was this big animal that got high off of, like, <laughs> smashing humans yeah. on them. I <laughs> never heard of that before. Did you know that? Like, well, yeah. well, you obviously did, because you knew. No, I knew birds get high, but I thought I would just assume that it would be well, off. They of, ate something. Right. That I would not think that it had anything to do with taking ants and rubbing no, them No, so over. what I was going to say is. How weird. What's cool about this is if you look at all the ancient forms of medicine and all, because there's forms of medicine that are thousands and thousands and thousands of years old and it all starts with observation so like like you know like uh what is it herders would notice that when their goats ate this particular plant they had sex with each other and that's where you get horny goat weed which Mm. is a real cordyceps they noticed that animals that ate this fungus were strong and virile so they started to eat this mushroom so they just observe what other animals doing and actually right now cordyceps would be a good thing to take during uh flu season um it's uh antiviral Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. It's and speaking of cordyceps, how's they working for you? Because I know you're taking them with the ashwagandha and everything else. Yeah, dude, I have quite the stack going on over at my yeah. house right now. Is it now. helping? It is. So I and what? Yes. I, and now that uh, I'm incorporating the juve light, I I was going to put a post up. I've just been waiting to share all the herbal supplements that I've been taking, and then the protocol I've been using with the juve light. But I I wanted to make sure that I prefaced that with. 
This is my experience. I'm not telling people that if you do this, for sure, it'll increase your testosterone. What I have noticed with me, because I have mine has been through the floor uh, for the last six months or so, um, I've, I'm noticing my libido coming back. And it's it's significantly in comparison, right? It's still not good. I'm still not back to what You're I was. just noticing a positive change. Yeah, no, I mean, keep being completely transparent, I was going, you know, I would go a week or two and have zero sex drive whatsoever. So no libido at all. And so now starting to feel that come back where I have these thoughts, I have these desires throughout the day. I wasn't having that before. That's happening to me again now. So that's a really good feeling. So I know that I'm heading in the right direction. Um, and considering all things considering, I mean, I'm going through this injury right now. I got sick. Like it's a motherfucker right now to be trying to increase my testosterone naturally. And I would love to be in there heavy squatting occasionally and stuff. None of that's happening right now. Have so. you had blood work done yet? Not not since all this. So I had blood work done last year. So last Are you planning on doing it again? Yeah, it's it's I mean yeah, if I get around to it. So you know it's not a, as much of a priority to me because I've done it enough times to kind of I like I know my body I can feel my body and I know when it's low, when it's high. So what's I we, recommend to people to get your blood work done, but I don't honestly do it every single year anymore because I've done it enough mm -hmm. times. So what's what I was gonna say is what's weird about because libido can definitely be a strong sign of lower or higher testosterone, but not always. For example, you can take, uh, if you're a normal healthy male and you take um, ashwagandha or cordyceps or uh, let me think of another one, tribulus or horny goat weed, um, and you're already or normal and healthy. Tongue, tongue cat Ali. Uh, tongue cat Ali. That's another one I'm your, taking. Your testosterone won't go up. Studies will show that they don't really raise testosterone in healthy men, but your libido will still go up. <laughs> so the average guy, if he takes cordyceps or you know horny goat weed or one of these other ones um you'll probably notice a boost in libido doesn't mean your testosterone is going up now oh, that's interesting but uh but they do show in studies with men with low testosterone that it will raise their testosterone so the only but the only way to know is have a blood test right like you could have the subjective um feelings of higher testosterone but you don't really know i you know i've had clients that will go get their testosterone levels checked and they think they're low and their testosterone and everything's real high. And then I had other times when a guy gets a random uh, physical and uh, everything feels fine. Sex, drive, motivation, strength, everything's good. Gets tested and he's under range. Mm -hmm. So It's kind of weird. You saying that makes me really interested to do it again, but I, I've been pretty spot on to how I feel is normally a pretty direct correlation with you know what your I, body pretty yeah, well. I, you know, would I be able to guess exactly where my test is right now? Probably not. Um, I bet I bet I could get a pretty good pretty good guesstimate uh, guesstimate guest hello <laughs> guesstimate guesstimate works yeah, a pretty I good guess, yeah, 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 yeah. pretty good guesstimate on where the range that I'm at right now uh, in comparison to where I've been where I really fucked up and where I actually recommend um, young men to go get tested now before you ever fuck with anything you know what a baseline is. yes I wish I would because that to me is the biggest difference so you have like some hormone therapist. So the, the healthy range, they say, is is that range from 400 to like 1,200, right? That's like what they consider healthy range. Well, that's a wide range. Mm -hmm. And so if you're somebody who goes in, you test at 500, doctor would say, hey, your total, total normal testosterone send you uh, send you away. But what if you were somebody who just two years before you fucked around with steroids actually would have tested at 1,200 free test, and then you fuck with steroids, and then it now has lowered your free test down to like 500, but yet you still fall in the quote unquote normal range, but it's really not normal for you because you were used to higher levels. Bro, those ranges are established off of averages. Right. That's yeah. all it is. That's what I'm saying. Right? So my point is that you could definitely be low testosterone, but not be testing super low uh, on what they consider an average because you might have been somebody who had you know, abnormally high testosterone mm -hmm. and you're used to that. You're no. used to that feeling and you don't know what it's like. You got it. Tests will tell you only some information, but not all. Then you have to consider your own subjective, how you feel. And so this is why I'm not mm -hmm. like in a rush to go back and, oh, see where my blood is and let's see what they read to me because I don't give a fuck what it says that much. I care about how I feel. And the number one driver for me right now is is my libido because that affects my partner. That affects my relationship 
Um, you know, to be honest, being like uh, estrogen uh, heavy and low testosterone probably makes me a fucking great partner as far as emotionally and yeah. sensitive. You're, you're having good conversations. Yeah, great conversation. I'm a lover. I like to cuddle right now, like all that shit. Want to watch the same shows. Right. So yeah. if I could just get my libido in check, like I'm fucking, yeah, yeah I got a happy, happy wife at home. You know what I'm Are saying? Are you all sensitive? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know your feelings? Oh, <laughs> totally. I'm totally that guy right now. So <laughs> there, I mean, to me, as long as, long as that part is, is solid, um, yeah, it matters to me to be able to build some muscle and shit so i'm sure when i get back into a very consistent uh regimen if i'm feeling like i'm not building at all knowing what i'm what i'm applying to my my training and my diet um that might dictate if i go back on testosterone or not but for me the 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 relationship the libido is my number one thing that i'm looking at right now and trying to fix if that's good then i can then i could slowly work on the building, building the testosterone levels up and building muscle in the future and things like that. But, uh, you know, so far so good where we're going. It's, it's more of a mental game for me than it is a physical one right now. Mm. So I, that's what I find the most challenging is just keeping my head, head straight about good it. Good deal. Justin, you just got back from, uh, CES. I did, man. I want to hear all about it that. It was dude. a whirlwind, dude. What happened? Well, at first, like we we were waiting because our flight was delayed, and so we didn't get there till like super late at night, uh, Monday night, and then Tuesday. Basically, we had one day, so one day to experience what CES was. And let me just tell you that um, you could probably put like twenty fitness expos and twenty like paleo effects is all you know what? in there into one. It's that thing. big, yeah. It was like an so ocean like, of people. How long would it take you to walk from one end to the like the other? I don't know, man. It, it, it honestly probably like a half an hour. What? Yeah, yeah. That's insane. Yeah, at one of the conventions. So I had no idea. And so here's the thing: we didn't know. Like I didn't know what to expect either. This was like totally one of those things that I was like really excited to go because I'm I geek out on a lot of these products and a lot of the the future stuff that's coming out and. and you know, all these companies are kind of showing off and, and peacocking a bit and trying to get press and all this attention. And um, so, you know, we're, we're running, hustling, we're, we're getting all this film and footage. And uh, we ended up uh, at the convention center, which was all the stuff that's like, you know, like stuff for your, uh, your camera, for drones, for like theater, for like RVs, trucks, like all this kind of stuff. And like, like where the fuck is the fitness? You know, where's the where's the wellness? Where's all this other stuff? Uh, it, it turns out it's in an entirely different location, like across town at the Venetian. Oh, so, really? So, <laughs> so you guys are in we the spent big- half our day waiting in all these lines, and it was raining and freezing and shit. And like we're <laughs> like our, at our hotel, um, it, like it was flooded where we're supposed to pick up Uber and everything, and so we had to like walk all around the like all around Vegas to try and get to a spot where the, an Uber would actually pick us up. It was pretty chaotic, dude. Like since since the moment where I did that parkour video till like I, I got there, like it was just been like pure chaos. So I was just riding by the seat of my pants. And uh, so anyway, we finally figured out that, oh shit, we're in the wrong place. So <laughs> now we got to get over there. We get over there. I run into, uh, you know, somebody that recognizes me from Mind Pump, which was rad. And um, and, and shout out to Sandra and Flextronics for, uh, you know, providing me with a pass to get in and everything. They pulled me into their special event where I met like really, really fascinating uh, CEOs that were showing off and displaying stuff that they weren't out on the floor. So I got exclusive kind of coverage of some products that only like CNN and, you know, some of these other uh, news uh, media channels kind of got to cover. So that was pretty cool. Um, Did you see any like trends or, you know, was there a theme? Because I feel like sometimes you go, like, I remember when we went to Paleo FX, the theme felt very bone broth and jerky or whatever. You know what I mean? Or Mm -hmm. or in uh, in coffee bombs. I saw a lot of those. Was there like a theme? Yeah. So there was, there was like two themes. So you saw like a gajillion wearables. um, And then you also saw people really trying to address sleep. So that being in... Oh, there was like a whole section of like in-home technology. So everywhere from your mattress to like lighting to, um, you know, you name it, like everything that was, was like an accessory in your house. Like they're trying to make in the direction of like being able to kind of ritualize your sleep patterns. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And like, um, obviously the sleep number bed, all that kind of stuff. But 
we actually ran into a, a cool company, uh, Newcom, I believe their name is, and uh, we 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 vlogged some of this. So Taylor and I actually uh, last minute, like we ran into Josh Trent for there from Wellness Force, and uh, he had just he did a panel earlier that morning that we missed because we were in the wrong place, but uh, he he gave us a heads up and a tip to go check them out, and uh, we just kind of like. They, again, this is another one of those cool things that like I had a media pass and I don't know why, you know, but I'm just like, you know, using was that, it. Was that from Sandra Frisco Bella, Sandra? Yes. Oh, shit. Shut yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Oh, my homegirl. I didn't know that she was the one who hooked this all up. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah. She, was she there? Yes, she was. I actually oh. didn't know she was going to be there. I didn't even know where their booth was. I We just randomly, we saw two security guards kind of standing outside and we were like, what is this? What do you guys got going on in there? Oh, it's, you know, this is private, private event, this and that. And we're like, oh, that's weird. We got media passes. You know, <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, really? Okay. Well, you know, let me go see who's there. And then, uh, somebody at the front, you know, of the, of this, uh, uh, uh you know, like event recognized me and it wasn't Sandra. And then she's like, oh, you know, you're from mind pump. And then, it kind of it was cool because like it was like wow validation cloud, right you know? cloud, yeah dude. yeah so. I saw you put on those Nikes that dope yeah, yeah yeah how does that work uh, you just put your foot so, in there yeah so there's just like technology that Flextronics actually worked with Nike to build and they put it on the bottom of the shoe and so it's like um, it basically like it has a wire that goes through the laces and so it just it just tightens up. Um, from that little motor on the bottom of your shoe and it just cinches it up. So whatever it is, like as far as the snug fit, like it, as you're running and everything, it will like readjust and keep it snug. So if your, your shoelaces is like basically never get like that loose feeling. So have you ever, have you, have you, oh, you haven't done snowboarding or wake with it. So snowboarding boots now, they've been around now for a good, I want to say 10 years, almost similar technology. So my boots, my wakeboard boots and my uh, old snowboard boots, you have this little just it's a knob. So I had to do it manually. So they've now auto mm -hmm. automated it. Right. But it, uh, you have a wire. That's I remember all, those. Yeah. yeah. And you just you just crank on it, it goes and yep. it cinches the laces up and you slide your feet in and then you just crank it and then it just cinches the whole thing up. Yeah. My most comfortable boots that I've ever ridden. So in. imagine that feeling just like that, but way cooler. Yeah. So right. yeah, but the, it was totally back to the future esque. You know, like they came out with that one shoe that uh, they, they, they basically modeled exactly after Back to the Future 2. But uh, so this was like, I guess these are out in the market already. I didn't even are know. Are they that. Nike or was it another brand? Nike. It is Nike. It is doing? Nike. Oh, they, you saw dope. them on the video, right? Yeah, I, was, I couldn't remember. If they they almost look like the ones on Back to the Future. Yeah, almost a little bit. I was like, a little bit of me was like hoping, like, oh, will they give this to me for free or what? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to score all this gear while I was there. That was did, my other goal. Did you get anything? And I got some stuff. Yeah, what, really? You yeah, I got this in motion bracelet. Yeah, the uh, a wearable that. Um, so it it has that same kind of technology, the bioelectric impedance. Oh, okay. Um, but they're they're kind of spin on just like having all the wearable stuff that everybody tries to have, as far as like a pedometer and you know heart rate and all these kinds of different features. They actually have it, so you can you can put your place your fingers on top of of the uh, like has these metal sensors on top that will basically register through the bioelectric impedance and, and give you some kind of a registered body fat percentage. So now you have that like sort okay. of ease of access, right? So that's kind of an interesting feature that I thought was cool to differentiate. Dude, it. Bring it in. I want to. I want all of us to test our. Did body they fat. tell you? Did they tell you the price of the shoes when it's going to hit the market? Like how much? Yeah, like upwards of like seven ninety nine oh, to, to, to a thousand. So what? There you go. If you're really into that shit, it's it. it they're really just catering to that. Uh, sneakerhead kind of market, right? Well, so, that's me, but yeah. that's fucking insane, though. It is know? still insane. That is How much are Yeezys and all that? Like, well, that yeah, no, yeah. I've, yeah. So yeah. I've spent a lot more than that on a pair of shoes, but those have different types of value, right? But although the first edition of those will probably be worth that, it would be smart to probably invest in these. 700 sounds crazy. I know someone thinks that's probably nuts to invest in crazy. that. It is crazy. But... Uh, might be crazy to buy them and like, wear them out and yeah. shit. Well, that, what, makes, what makes those special is because it's like a first edition. Like, obviously, that if they keep selling them for 700 something going down the road, it'd be tough for, I think, to continue to get that price range. But you pay for Yeezys. A lot of what you're paying for is you, that, that first collaboration. So like I have the original Yeezys with Nike mm -hmm. and they're worth a lot of money because he's no longer with Nike. He's with Adidas. So, you know, it's like when a baseball player after they retire and shit like that and they were fucking, they have all kinds of records, baseball card goes up. It's a similar type of, of market. Uh -huh. But uh, that's a lot of money for mm -hmm. a, a new shoe like <laughs> that. Is, yeah. That's crazy. That's per shoe. 
It's yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, <laughs> right now pretty, I could save some money. Much. You're good. Yeah, right. you got one right foot. now. I half off yeah. right now, right? Uh, I um, <clears throat> what's cool to me is that you you see kind of how the fitness industry moves in terms of what they're talking about, and then you can pretty much predict that there's gonna be products around that, like you said, sleep. Yeah, and then I would assume meditation. Did you see yes, anyone meditation? Meditation. There? So this I was kind of mentioning Newcom, uh, and they. They were just doing like celebrities and people that had VIP, and so we were able to kind of sneak our way in there, and um, we we got a twenty minute session. And so, what is it? So they have like a GABA cream, I, I guess, to to basically like put like underneath your your chin on your neck, right about here. Under, okay, right, and so basically, like you, you get these like. Um, whatever you call it, like nightshade. Um, so you don't have any, it blocks out all the, the light and everything. And then you, you listen to ambient sort of, uh, music and each one of it is specifically tailored to get you into that theta state. So, um, and then you're kind of laying back on this, this, uh, recliner and they put like a, you know, blanket over you anyways. So we're, we're doing like 20 minutes of this and, um, like with the technology, what they're they're trying to do is basically, um, you know, like speed the process up to get you to that that meditative state. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Like I've heard that before. I've done Brain FM, you know, I've done all these other things that um, have helped me to sort of calm and get to that, you know, parasympathetic state. And uh, so I was like, cool, because he the way he was kind of pitching it was, you know, people that are sleep deprived or like, you know, you're traveling and all these kinds of things like you're going to be able to feel recovered and then you're going to get up and feel a little bit sharper, but like relaxed and this and that, which, you know, probably would have been the case. However, my adrenaline was so high. I was so sleep deprived, you know, the night before we set off like the fire alarm, like shit was just like chaotic. <laughs> and what? so we only got like two or three hours of sleep. Anyway, that's another story. But, uh, so, <laughs> so we were just like running on fumes and we just fi- finally, we were like told our body we could rest. And so we both were, were like, uh, like I wasn't asleep mentally, but my body was just completely out. Like I was out quick too. It was like, it, it was crazy. It was a sen- like a weird sensation. And then I got out and we're walking and I'm like, Oh my God, how are you feeling? He's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like way too chill. You know, I'm like, I'm trying to like muster up some energy to keep, keep going. And we thought that like, okay, we'll start kind of reclaiming our energy as we go and kind of do this. Like, no, it never came back, dude. <laughs> like we literally were, we were going to go out and gamble and like meet some people network and do all kinds of stuff. Dude, we, we could barely even muster energy to go out to like eat and get something downstairs. Wow. We were just like, done. How did it, co- now time. how did it compare? Because we're all, we talk, I mean, it's been a while since we've talked about brain FM, but we all love brain FM. We all utilize brain. I was using brain FM last night. Yeah. Um, So how does it compare to that? I think that um, the, as far as the sound was similar, but like the patterns were different. Like it, it was a lot more ambient noise than one that I had. Um, So it had a little bit of a different sort of structure to it, but um, the feeling was completely different. I think it was the gamma cream or whatever they used. GABA. GABA, I mean. Yeah. So that. It's an inhibitor. It's an inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter, I believe. Thank and you. so yes. it's like it re- so like alcohol releases GABA. Um, I think cannabis can release GABA. So it's just like relaxing, like you yeah. know. Okay. But if you have a lot of GABA in your brain, it'll probably make you feel sleepy and yeah. drowsy. Yeah. So I imagine that uh, if I was were to add like the brain of fem and then the GABA cream at the same time, like yeah, it probably have been similar. Makes me interested. I'm gonna order some. Yeah, it was GABA pretty, cream. You can just it's get a that central in. nervous system I think so. depressant. Yeah. So, so that might have been why you felt so sleepy. Yeah. Yeah. It it was like it was very powerful. So But yeah. it's crazy that they made a cream because it's hard to get GABA to cross the blood brain barrier. So they put, they gave you a cream which means it's transdermal somehow. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't I mean how you know what yeah, I mean? How's it penetrate? There's yeah. got to be something else to it. I'd yeah, like to learn more mechanism about it. there. Yeah, so that's the thing. I don't really know. Like we didn't get the full breakdown of you know the the engineering that went behind it, and you know, and the you remember the name of the company? New Calm. So oh, N- that was New Calm. Calm. Yeah. So, but very fascinating. I mean, I guess it's getting a lot of praise uh, w- within you know the tech community and everything, and then. Um, I mean, we just, we, were those your favorite or did you have any that we, that um, you, those were two good ones. So I, you know what? Like I, I thought that VR was kind of like this buzz thing that was like super gimmicky and like, you know, it was kind of overhyped. And then I actually tried 
you know, a few of them. And I got to say, dude, it was so much fucking fun. Like that was like I saw the one where you're time. I saw the one where you're laying down like an airplane or a flying bird or what the fuck you were. Right, what, right. What were you doing? So, the that one in like specifically, they were in the fitness space and they were trying to kind of make a game that you basically are flying almost like a, 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 a you know, one of those like gliders um, through rings and stuff. And it's kind of like remember when we did the the neural feedback down with Dr. Andrew Hill and yeah. he had that. So it's yeah, like, yeah. but this one's like, you're involved, like you're immersed in this, you're flying. And right. so it, being in that kind of um, position too. So their angle with it is that like, you're basically in some sort of a, a, a plank. So you're, you're, you're stabilizing, you know, your core with your core. You're exercising the whole right? time. Did you feel like you were working that hard or was it? No, because the thing is, it when you go to like turn and rotate and so it rotates your whole body and like you're just focused on trying to get to that place that you need to get to get the points yeah. you know and so like it was cool because it, it like I'm just competitive I'm, I'm a gamer and everything so I just I just had fun doing that and uh, I could see how like initially you could you could argue that it it did something for my core and like I maybe strengthened me just in that position but you know, they're going to run into that wall of like, okay, now all that is, you know, Dude, irrelevant. When, when right. VR gets really good and cheap, <laughs> that's going to change so much stuff. Yeah. But, okay, there's, there's, there's the opposite of this is where it was really stupid. I saw this company that was like basically recreating you going into a gym. So <laughs> what? it's like you're going into a fake gym and like, like basically like, exercising and i'm like why don't you just go to a real gym you know like this is so dumb like why why do i care about going to a gym and lifting things and all, when it's not even real like pretending to work like out. pretending yeah. yeah it was so funny because i was can, like because they can make you really strong in vr like whoa i could bench 500 pounds. yeah exactly yeah. yeah i was like this is ridiculous like it, it was funny but uh you know what i'm sure the, some people will be into it but you know if you think about it like there's gonna be a lot of people that want to do that. Like, why? Why would you want to? Planet ha- fitness people. Will yeah, do and it. why would you well, want to hand glide in VR when you can hand glide for real? Or why would you want to have sex with VR porn when you could have real sex? Like, man, where there's was that? People- I was trying to find the VR well, porn. I couldn't I find see, it. I could see. I could think of a, how many people, okay, in our career that we've met that were very intimidated to go to the gym. Yeah. How less intimidating is it if you could go pretend to go to the gym in VR world? You know, and you have your see, VR. There's an argument, there right? For your sure. VR trainer yeah. comes over and says, "Come on over here, Susie. Don't be intimidated yeah. by the weight." Oh room. my God, you're looking. Good today, right? You know, <laughs> pick those dumbbells up. We're gonna do some of these fly. Yeah, great wow, job. Everybody's fatter wow. than me in this look gym. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everybody's so hot. He's shaping out of breath. Wow, look at Johnson over here. Yeah. He's, he's really dogging I'm, it today. I'm the most fit person in here. I don't even yeah. work out. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. But you didn't find the VR porn, huh? No, I was. That's I, stupid. I know it's funny. I, I would for sure for expect it. that. To, of course you were. Just because it would be funny. Yeah. 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 That, that's why. And yeah. That's yeah. the main reason. And, why. That's totally the main reason. And why. awesome. You got to yeah. go behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's probably, it's probably like in the underground, the basement. Or Put something. this on real quick. It's all the real creeps. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. No, I met, I met a lot of really cool people, a lot of real innovative ideas and uh, made some good contacts. So I, just, I had a good time. It man. just goes show, to show you the difference in size between the industries. Like you have, Dude, we tech went to. Is fucking huge. Yeah. Cause we went to. The LA Fit Expo, which is the large, it's one of the largest ones, right? Yeah, yeah, it's up there. Okay, so it's one of the largest ones, but it's pales in comparison to yeah. a tech one, right? Which we got, we really got lost. Like even when we got to the to the fitness one, like we couldn't remember exactly where we entered. Like we got turned around like at least four or five times. Mm. It was crazy. Wow. But, uh, yeah, it. I mean, there was just so much cool shit in there. I couldn't even take it all in. We. We tried so hard to like hit every booth, so uh, like everybody was like breaking down and for the day, and like they were leaving and everything. <laughs> and we're just like trying to trying to capture as many people as we could and stayed there basically till the lights. Now, came how off. do they get? Because I noticed at the fit expos, they their goal is to get your attention, and the mm-hmm. way they do it at the fitness expos is usually girls that are half naked, mm-hmm. loud music, or they're throwing T-shirts, or like one of the booths had a. Look like a Formula One car, and the was, I don't know why, but people would pose in front of it. What are they doing there to get attention? Are they? Is it? Is it? They're they're building out their like they they're putting a ton of money into their actual like uh, their booths, so it becomes an experience on its own. Um, but there was a little bit of you know the girl thing. If you went on the other um, the convention center, like they had. 
you know, it's a lot of peacocking. Like there's some companies that like were obnoxious and, you know, and they had like, <laughs> like there's this, there's this like ridiculous uh, RV that had like a trailer and like a truck that was like, had to be worth at least a million, you know, each. Like these things were just absurd. What's in the RV? Was it just big? It's just big. It looked like, you know, looked like a Bentley, you know, like it's just those like had everything like luxurious. Like um, I, I actually, we, we took some footage you guys will see, but like, I mean, it had like the most pimp like couch in there with a flat screen and then like kitchen. And then in the back, you got this like That's how Adam mirror and rotating bed and then like a helicopter flies on yeah. top of it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, dude, what this, was the, is, this is made for mind pump. What's the point of it? What would they're trying to market that or sell that? Like, what? yeah, they're trying to market and like get, get people's interest. Cause like, I guess like that's where, you know, your tech millionaire type characters are, are hanging out so wow apparently they're that's trying how, to, that's to, how they go to, to burning man them. yeah right, right? I mean? that's that, how elon musk goes to that's man. how i'd like to go right there yeah, yeah. That's, that doesn't how, count. that's how i want to go anywhere like, right. i was like dude that's so awesome but they had like the hot chick you know kind of like everywhere around that thing and then um like there was just yeah there was this one really really creepy booth and I was like, we looked at each other. Oh my God, like we got to leave, dude. This is fucking creep me out. Like there was, it was, I think it was somewhat transhumanism that they were sort of promoting uh -huh. with it. Right. So transhumanism is this like whole movement to like become more of like a, a robot, a robot right? basically. Yeah. You just slowly introduce like chips and, um, y you know, tech within your body and, so they had like these representatives, these models out there that were basically actresses and, and actors that um, like played sort of this weird, like, um, I don't know. It reminded me a lot of Westworld on some level. So they had this, this kind of demeanor that was almost robotic in the way that they talk to you and everything. And, and like, I was like talking to this girl and I'm like, oh, so like, what is the technology? I was like trying to get like information from her before I went inside the booth and everything. And she just was like, really like, wouldn't give me any information and was just like really weird and awkward. She's with like, me. I don't know what I, I'm just like, supposed to act I, like a robot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like it, you're going to be sexy and new and, and I was like, you're creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> did you not go in there? No. And they had like people on the outside, like, so I did some research later. I guess they're they're promoting some kind of technology where you put like chips in your spine, and it's that sounds safe, right? And, like you're, <laughs> yeah. you're supposed to emit some kind of pheromone and like be more attractive. Oh my and, god, like, some creepy shit. What? Yes, that sounds interesting. Yes, and there's a there's a documentary on Netflix that's coming out with that, that's like it's like a, a sci-fi show, but it's like highlighting their technology. So oh really? I thought that was like oh wow what the like, length that men will go, dude. And it was, worried. it was just, it's one of those things. You're just like, do you guys okay. think we're around the corner from this? Do you think we're around the corner from like half human, half freaking robot? Do you think uh, we're going to start seeing more? I think it's happening already, but I mean like yeah. it's not commercial. It's still really yeah. clunky. Yeah. yeah the, I think that, I think the the robots are way clunky. I think the technology will first be applied to um, like people who want to become able-bodied. So, you know, if you have like paralyzed or you have a limb that's, that, you know, you're missing a limb or you're blind or whatever. That's already starting to happen with certain types mm -hmm. of technology, and that'll get accepted really quick. When it's going to get weird is when normal, healthy people to enhance things. Yeah, and that is a more that'll be more of a moral issue than anything. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you people want laws against that. Imagine if imagine this. Imagine if somebody could implant some kind of a you know uh, a lens into their eye, and now they have like binocular vision. Uh. Black you know hair. what I mean? Yeah, that might I make you. That, that might make you a little bit uncomfortable knowing that the the dude the over peering there peering into your, right, your he room. Be, yeah, you know, he could way yeah, far he away. He could totally be way far away, Just creeping on you. Right. Or yeah. you know the the chip that gives you like where you can access the internet through thought. Like that yeah. would suck. I mean, that's kind of they were getting in that direction of like longevity. Like you, you know you're gonna live forever and the internet and all that and like we're gonna download your consciousness. So you know, you know where the real like, the real question of that is, and this is something that they cannot answer. And I don't think you'll ever be able to answer. Let's say if we could take your consciousness and, you know, download it to a computer. Is that really you or is it a perfect is it a copy, copy of you? Yeah. 
Right. We would never fucking know. Not even the copy of you would know because yeah. it would still be you. Would you still feel it? Right. But is it just a perfect copy of you? Yeah. We'd yeah. never know that. It'd be so, that's one of those things that's just. I don't know. But good luck with mind that. Mind boggling. Yeah. 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 Mind bottling. What movie Bottle. is that where he says that? I don't know. My mind is bottled. Yeah. Is that what that, that is? I don't, I don't, it's not. It's actually mind boggle. Yeah. yeah. I was right. watching Modern. You guys watch Modern Family at all? Yeah. They make fun of the girl, the Colombian girl, when she did her accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she brought it up the other, just the episode I was watching the other day. She brings up like, what do I mess up? You know, <laughs> she's hot, dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. All kinds she's of attractive. Work. Her and isn't she she's with that attractive. one dude uh, that like uh, from Magic Mike? Yeah. <laughs> What? Say what? Adam? I know that. He's my guy. <laughs> I know that. I stole his I, moves. This was a conversation yeah. Katrina and I were having last night, literally. So I, she, we were talking about Talk her. about a good looking couple. Well, yeah, I was talking about how, yeah, how, good, look, how good looking she was. Sure, and that's not crazy. She's, I think, like late 40s now. Um, and she's like, yeah, no, she's dating the guy from Magic Might. And I was like, you, Channing, Channing, whatever his name is? And she's like, no, 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 no. no, no the silverhead the, one. The other one, dude. The other guy. Yeah, what's his name, dude? I don't know. Uh, Joe, oh, Joe Mange, Man, Manganiello. <laughs> <laughs> it's my cousin. Oh, it's your, it's your Italian brother. It's my cousin. No, somebody actually told me that... Uh, I look like him. Yeah, you know? he's yeah. like any handsome guy that is dark. I was like, oh my god, I look like him. Somebody, Stop. every every somebody handsome <laughs> Italian guy sounds like, oh, I've been told yeah. that I look somebody like actually yeah. Superman. No, yeah. nobody told me. Everybody tells me. More like Luigi, told me. Luigi bro. It. Somebody wanted Luigi. to tell me. <laughs> nobody told me though. Damn it, <laughs> Luigi. Yeah, he's he's six five. He eats a Mario. Fuck me, homeboy's six five. <laughs> yeah, I just looked him up oh, right he's now. Big. He's big. Yeah, dude. he's a big boy. That sucks. She doesn't look like she's from down. She don't look petite to me. Bro, this is this is a this is the kind of guy. This is the kind of man. She's got some good, you know. That in a tribe would get. He's like he's the he's the guy that gets all the women. You know what I mean? A guy like this. If you're in a tribe, good luck. You're screwed. Yeah. Basically, hang out with him. So you can be like, hey, you mind if I get the other ones? Yeah. Have a little try. Right. Right. Nope. Hey, I believe we have some stuff from Thrive. Yeah. Whoa. Look at that. We do from Thriva. Is this who's who's got what we got going on here, Douglas? Today is just an order to demonstrate. There's many things that thrive you may not be aware of. Oh, oh okay. cool! Ooh. I, like I, I already was already feeling like that on our regular orders, man. Yeah. Every time you order something, I'm surprised. This is your they, insider information right here. What would you say? Th- they they're starting to remind me of like a organic Costco. Yeah. I kind of feel like that, right? That's feel, what. Oh, that's yeah. what. That 100. That's, that's what they're they're doing. 100. percent so I think a lot of people think, oh, Thrive Market, it's a place where you get food. Or you can get... BOSU ball? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Bosu exercise. Ball. A exercise physio ball. ball. Physio yeah, ball. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Physio. Oh, good call. We need that. That's a good call. We, we need it because either. your dog yes, bit it. because bit, bit, Bentley <laughs> ate it. <laughs> a, little, a little warning for you guys. When Bentley uh, comes in, you do not want any balls around because... Ouch. He, I'll, put, I'll zip mine up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, gets re- he gets weird, dude. That's a non-GMO physio ball. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They include a pump. Oh, it comes with a oh, pump, too? Your, there's Good a idea. penis pump, Adam. Yeah, there it is. Looks like Okay, this next thing I got was, I thought, useful for families. Because, I, you know, I have a daughter, and she takes a school lunch, and I like to give her something quality to eat. But I don't like to put it in plastic. So what this is, is made out of recycled bottles, first off. It's what? It's insulated bag. Check that out, Justin. Cool. Pass that around here. Let's see how that goes. Huh. This is cool. And then what you put inside... It's a lunch tote. Is a stainless steel bento box type. Oh, thing. that's great! Look at that. Awesome. Oh, stainless steel, yeah. That's and they also have a ice pack that goes along with it. Again, Sorry. made from recycled plastic bottles. I think this is pretty awesome for anybody who wants to. Wow, this is really cool. Give their kids something that's not going to leak BPA. They do sell a lunch. lot of shit. I never, I did not go on there and look up the section. Ice and pack. That was the order this week. Thank you, Doug. Very cool. This little Doug. this little lunch tote is actually kind of stylish too, dude. I like this. Yeah. yeah throw the ice pack in there, and boom. Right. You know, and it's, and it's like set to where you could probably fit two, maybe three of those things that you have, Doug, which is more realistic, right? And for the average person, instead of like the six pack bags, this is like the normal humans version of the six pack bags. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same, like, but like probably better. The reasonable quality. lunch guy. Probably better quality because their stuff really sucked when they first came out. Mm. It's gotten a little bit better, but it's, I think I've gone through like six six pack bags. They must not want to be affiliated with us. Yeah, they, no, that's what they get, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to affiliate with this. Text some shit about your company. Told you. Yeah. I, I, actually, the- I did reach out to them a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to fuck them. Bird. This quaz brought to you by Organify. 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First up, Nick Ford Health. Will you guys do a pure water fast or a black coffee slash water fast? I'm attempting to do a 48-hour fast this week and would love to hear more about your strategy. We are Ooh. going to do a fast starting. Now, we're recording this on a Thursday. And it's airing tomorrow, which is. will be when we're starting when the we're fast. Shit. Oh. So when this airs, that will be the first day of what I hope to be... A 72-hour fast. My goal is three yeah. days, but I'm, I've am i already told myself that I could buckle it, too. Oh, you've already gave yourself an out. I, I gave myself an out because the, the, this is the same way I coach and teach people that are trying to like extend their fast is I've never done a two-day fast. So to uh, try and stretch to three. You've never done a two even? No. Even two, yeah. So I'm going to be happy. If I can get two full days, I'll be happy. I'm going to obviously go for three. So maybe by day two, I'm already used to not having any food. Mm. Yeah. So, now, you've done a three-day, right, I've Justin? I've done a three before. I've only done two. Two-day also. Oh, really? Yep. And you know what I noticed after the second day? And you might notice this too, Adam, because I've heard other people say this, is that the first day was actually hard. Mm -hmm. After the second day, I'm like, I could do this forever. That's kind of how I feel it might happen. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. That So that's the goal is to go three if, if I feel that way. But if I don't feel that way... Then I'm I'm willing to throw the towel in it. So, do you guys have right. any strategies or anything you're gonna do? I well, I just hydrate. It man. reminds me of when I get ready for a show. Obviously, I'm not restricting to nothing. I'm still eating something. But when you start to restrict like that, it's challenging no matter what. So, water and gum is like my my go to man. You can't yeah. have gum. Why can't I have gum? It doesn't it, because then it doesn't count. That's a bullshit fucking theory. <laughs> it's true. That's a bullshit theory. It's true. I'll be chewing gum and and drinking <laughs> I'm just water. Kidding. Drinking water. That's so bad. <laughs> yeah. He's like he's ready to attack you right yeah. there. Yeah. Get That's out of bullshit. here. Bullshit. Yeah, Actually, Rhonda Patrick no. would even Rhonda Patrick says that anything but water is, is called is considered breaking it. Even I know. coffee. I know. That's why yeah. I'm like I don't know. I've done it with coffee. So before. there's the there's the fasting. I, here's the th here's the deal with that, and, I, and I'll make this clear on the show. Like, in and and this is not like. Uh, arguing with Ronja Patrick. What I would argue, though, is that you, the difference as far as the benefits, the health benefits that you'll get from restricting to just water and chewing gum is fucking not that big of a difference than somebody who went and did nothing whatsoever, right? So if you went three days, no water, no gum, no coffee, no anything, versus somebody who went there and had water and gum to kind of help keep their mind mm -hmm. fucking... The health benefits of the two are going to be pretty damn fucking close. Now you now it's uh, the funny thing about that is you're you're actually probably right. The there's something called the fasting mimicking diet, which is uh, advocated by um, Dr. Walter Longo, and this is a five day sub low calorie diet where you're eating something like five or six hundred calories a day, right. and it's mostly fat, um, very very little protein and no carbohydrates. And what he's finding in his studies is that they are getting what seems to be equivalent benefits um, to a traditional just straight up water fast. So that yeah. just confirms my point that it's like that those people are getting calories even. So if mm -hmm. you're somebody who's restricting to just pure water, coffee, or you know, you're really splitting I'm, the hairs. I'm wondering if the gum might actually make you more hungry though. No. Well, I mean, no. It's, you used it when you diet. When yeah, you diet yeah, it for yeah. a show. It, help, it helps because it's keeping my mouth busy. Right. Oh, okay. That's what the, like the the water thing, <laughs> like the water thing too. I mean, it, it helps to just keep yeah, you need that keep it busy. If you keep it busy, where you're constantly drinking, sipping something, or you're chewing gum. I, I, trust me, this is not my first rodeo. <laughs> Restricting to the level that I had to restrict to get on fucking stage ready. Let me tell you, it's. I don't think this is going to be harder for me. Fasting for one to three days compared to dieting for a show for eight weeks to me, that's what day oh, in, no. day out, yeah. every day in being in, in a, for the most oh, part. I will not argue with that at all. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd rather do all fucking fast for, you know, three, four days. Right. And Eight weeks or twelve yeah, weeks of I'll dieting, take that any day of the week. Uh, what do you guys? What do you notice, Justin? Because you have you've done the longest fast, and I think you've yeah. probably done them more frequently. Because yeah. I've I've done twenty four and forty eight, but I only did a forty eight once. How many times have you done um, like, prolonged ones? The prolonged ones. So um, if I I've only done probably the prolonged ones twice. So if I've done two three day fasts before, 
And um, I've also done like 24 hour fasts like a few times um, previous to that. So that's how I kind of started this. And then, um, you know, if you count, well, basically I, I restructured my, the entire way I eat after I started doing the 24 hour fast because it was like so profound uh, for me personally. And um, so me going through the three day fast, what I noticed the most is that, yeah, the first days, especially if I've been eating breakfast consistently, I notice in, in the morning, it's like, oh my God, it's a little bit like, like you get those pains, the hunger pains a little bit, and then you kind of work your way through that. But for me, I just have to stay busy. And then towards the end of the day, uh, it starts to calm down as long as I'm hydrating pretty consistently when I need it. And, uh, but then my mental clarity, my sharpness starts to kick in. And then the next day I get more energetic and then I start really thinking really clear. And so by the third day, I'm just like very sharp and, um, I, I'm not really thinking about food at that point. And then it's like, I have to reintroduce food almost like that's kind of a, a, a chore, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting. It's, you, you know, what would be cool is if we all have a similar experience as that, how to try and test, uh, like one of our retreats where we get away, mm. where we lead up to that in a fast, like we're already fasted for a day. So me? day, day two, we'll be on fire, bro. Day. Your, your mind is, it's pretty, your, your Justin's right. I experienced the same thing with the 48 hour fast. My mind was very, wouldn't that be cool though? If we did that then, it if, it, if we cool. all have that same experience and we all agree that that's how we feel, I would love to challenge us where it's like, okay, we know we're leaving. Like, let's say on Saturday, let's fast Friday. So when we get there Saturday, we're already on the second day of being fasted, work for that whole day. Maybe the third day is the second day or third day we're there. Then we eat or whatever like that and enjoy mm. a big feast after we've you've got down on some I bet work. you're right, dude. I it, bet you we'd be all on fire. In animal studies, 72-hour uh, fast, I can't remember which animals they used, regenerated the entire immune system. Mm. Oh, I remember when you first mm. talked about that and somebody tried to fucking get all butt. No, like so uh, all the immune, cells, the immune cells, you know, start to die off and replace themselves with new immune cells. Not while you're fasting. This happens during the refeeding process when mm. stem cells are turned on and then they, re they turn into new cells to replace kind of the old ones. Mm -hmm. And then there was a study that was done, and this was published in medical journals, um, on patients with chemotherapy. They had them do a 72-hour fast prior to chemotherapy. And the fasting, what they're saying is that fasting turns on a system in the body where the body then starts to recognize these cancer cells and starts to kill them. So that's cool, right? They did the fast, did the chemo, killed way more cancer with less chemo. But the part that they did not anticipate was that fasting actually reduced the damage from the chemo on healthy cells. Mm. Like it's fucking weird when you it think about weird. it because you, you, you expect it to do the same thing for all the cells. Mm -hmm. But in reality... It's protecting the healthy cells and weakening, you know, the sick cells. Yeah. And when you start to realize that fasting is not, uh, I mean, we're using it as a technique and all that stuff, but in reality, it's just another operating system that we do not, uh, we don't harness anymore. It's well, like you give your body a chance to really like work internally. Like you, you just allowing, like uh, instead of it, it, you know, prioritizing the digestive, you know, process and all the mechanisms that go with that. Like now all of a sudden it's okay. Now that now they have free reign to kind of like go throughout your body and identify problematic uh, cells. Well, I do want to point out though, that we all agree on this and we wrote a, we wrote a whole guide on fasting, mm -hmm. right? So we offer a guide, but yet at the same time, I'll tell you that I don't recommend fasting to everybody. Because I also think that there's levels to this and more the majority of people I hear that are doing it are doing it because somebody else has attached it to fat loss or attached yep. it to some yeah. of the benefits. And so people are going into it like, oh, I heard fasting is a great way to lose some body fat. Like that should not be your main driver to do a fast. Mm -hmm. Like you, we are searching for the health benefits and it should be something intermittently thrown into your routine. And I think I highly recommend that you have a good understanding of your, your body's baseline first and where you're at, your caloric maintenance is before, before you start restricting and taking away because yeah. otherwise it can really quickly lead to an eating disorder in itself. You have to have and a I've seen that relationship And I've first. seen this happen. Yeah. I've seen people that I meet, they're, oh, I fast every day and this and that. And it's like, oh, it's so it works so well for me. I've lost all this weight. And it's like, ah, it's not the reason why you should yeah. be doing it. No, the way, the, the way I look at fasting now is different than the way I, I looked at it in the past in that um, I think if I'm going to make a prediction with fasting, I think what will happen is people are going to use it 
um, pre- periodically like this, like you know, once every three months or one or twice a year, I do a five day fast or something like that. I yeah. don't necessarily think the everyday fast type of thing is necessarily uh, going to be what people are going to do. I think it's just well, it makes I'm going to tap into it, you know, once or twice a year, kill off old cells, you know, stimulate stem cells. Uh, regenerate, you know, parts of my body. Do you know that your 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 organs shrink when you fast? Hmm. Your your liver, in particular, yeah, trip. will shrink well, we, as you're fasting. You feel your stomach shrink for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It does, but yeah. I mean, literally, like your liver starts to like it's it literally starts to shrink. Like some of it gets meta- almost like metabolized by the body, hmm. and then when you refeed, it rebuilds, but with better function. Mm -hmm. It's just another operating system. And we totally, it's funny because we've done it on accident as humans. Like we're like, Oh shit, we need to solve, you know, starvation and hunger uh, to the point where we don't realize that we've, we, you know, we're we're not living the way the body right. lives optimally. We're shutting down a, a vital component that that really benefits us. I th- I, th- I think out of all the natural things you could do besides you know just leading a healthy life, the single a- you know act of you know utilizing fasting is probably one of the most anti-cancer things that I can think of, mm-hmm. just based off of the current literature. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's pretty awesome for me personally. My experience with the forty-eight hour fast, the reason why I did it was uh, I was having really, really bad gut issues. And when I came out of the 48-hour fast, I did the, you know, the parasite cleanse and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, it, like, it was such a dramatic reversal of how I felt, how my gut had been feeling for months, that it really blew me away. So I'm really interested to see how I feel after this fast, because I know in particular for the gut, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing, because the gut regenerates cells so quickly. I would imagine that fasting would probably cause that to happen much faster. So. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Bonica Zalasak. Bonica. Why do you guys interview CrossFitters when you guys are against it? Can't tell if you support it, want to see their side and try to understand it better, or call them out on the show. It's so funny when people say this because, yeah, why would we do that? We're not against CrossFitters at all. I've got, I think we've said since the very beginning that uh, I've got quite a few buddies that own, own places. I've got a lot of friends that are into it. We just don't promote it the same way that a lot of people that own boxes promote promote the modality. They mm-hmm. promote it like a great way to be healthy and get in great shape. And I disagree with that. I yeah. disagree. I think it can be a byproduct of that. I think a basketball player, a football player, a baseball player can get in shape and can possibly be healthy because they play a sport. But I don't think that that if a, the 80, 90 percent of the population came to me and said, Adam, I'm looking to get in shape. I wouldn't recommend them baseball. I wouldn't recommend them soccer. I wouldn't recommend them football as a way of doing that, nor would I recommend CrossFit. So for those reasons, that's our stance on it. It doesn't mean that I have any ill will towards a badass CrossFitter or somebody who is an athlete and loves the sport. Or I, I, I'm very, very intrigued and fascinated with the business. But it is not a. Um, we, I don't think we're against it. I don't no. think we're against it at all. No, the the problem from day one was the programming. Mm-hmm. That was really it. And we, I was, you know, I was specifically very um, targeted and specific with that. Was using movements that should not be used uh, in ways that they should not be used. So, like, you know, Olympic lifts and in, in fatigue based circuit type of programming. I think that's terrible programming. That being said, CrossFit, and I've said this a hundred times, CrossFit did what the bodybuilding, muscle building, and fat loss community could not do. They failed. They, they, they could not, you know, uh, CrossFit got squats and deadlifts and overhead presses to be cool, and they got women to do these, ex- these highly effective muscle building exercises, and they made it cool for women to build muscle. And they built an incredible community, better than anybody else had done before. Fast. So fast. I mean, they did in 10 years what, like I said, what I saw in the previous, the previous 10 that I saw in gyms and stuff, we made, we, we moved at a snail's place, all, all pace. All of a sudden, CrossFit comes in, and within a short period of time, women are deadlifting, squatting, overhead pressing. Everybody talks about building muscle. It all of a sudden becomes cool. There's this community that the gyms lost. Because gyms used to have that community. It used to be that way way back in the day. I can remember going into a world gym or a gold gym and you'd walk in there. And first off, you'd have some people with a Walkman, but most people didn't. Most people went in there. It was the music that was on the the loudspeakers and you'd 
go and lift and you knew people like, wait, what's up? What's going on? How's your squat going? What's that? You know, people would spot each other. There was this code where you could ask somebody to jump in and everybody was cool about it. And it was this really cool atmosphere. It was also a dungeon. It was also dirty. It was also not friendly to women. But there was this community that gyms lost um, and I saw them, you know, lose it into the point where it became the herd people in and get them out real quick model yeah. where people walk in, they've got their their iPod or their phones plugged into their ears or whatever. Nobody's paying attention to anybody. People get pissed off if somebody asked to jump in. I, I can't believe that, you know, I remember that that switch all of a sudden it was like, that guy's, you know, hogging the machine. I used to tell him like, ask him if you could jump in and they, they come back. He won't let me jump in. I'd be like, what the fuck is going on here? That's gym code. Gyms went downhill when it came to building a community. In comes CrossFit at the perfect yeah. time to rebuild that. And, and they did a great job. And I just think that, you know, my personal opinion, it just feeds into that that problematic mentality that uh, I sh- I shared with with most people that get into CrossFit. It's it's super competitive and it 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 it, it just serves it up to you to um, you know, just like focus completely on intensity being the only uh, gauge that that we're going to operate off of. And there's just more effective ways to do it. And so I think that, you know, us having people on the show, like I realize where they're coming from, you know, for, for one. So I get it. Like I, I get like, like it's fun. It's, it's in, it's, it's structured around. It feeds into that. Like I want to dominate. I want to, I want to kick ass today. I want to fucking, you know, be a hero. And like it feeds into that, which is great. But at the same time, it, there's detriment to it. And, and the program is one thing we highlighted. We just want to see change. We want to influence and see change in all these communities. Mm-hmm. So it's not like us versus them. It's not like us versus bodybuilding. It's not like us versus, you know, you name it, yoga, whatever it is. It's it's identifying things that we don't agree with. And staying firm on that. Right. And I don't have to subscribe to your ideas in that direction. I can respect you and your your interest and like you have good intent, uh, you know, with what you're trying to 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 get with your members at your gym or whatever you're doing. But like I'm challenging you to think differently. That's yeah. all. And the other part of it is it had and it's not it's changing. Okay, but like anything, being in fitness for 20 years, I've seen fad and uh you know just fad come and go come and go and they all have the same feel to them i remember when crunch uh not excuse me not crunch uh curves i remember when curves came on the scene curves was this circuit training pneumatic equipment based fitness and they were targeting women who were intimidated by gyms i remember the explosion of it it fucking blew up it's just like what we're watching with orange theory right now orange theory's got that feel and so crossfit had a similar feel when it started to grow. And because I'd seen so many of these things come and go, um, automatically I'm going to be skeptical. Automatically I'm like, all right, what's this new, you know, quote unquote new thing that's coming on the scene? Now, CrossFit did that, it exploded, but you're starting to see things settle and you're starting to see the bad stuff kind of get weeded out. You know, Mm -hmm. I couldn't say this 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I hate to say it, but I'd walk into a lot of CrossFit gyms and I'd see a lot of shit, a yeah. lot, a lot of shit. Not so much today. I'm starting to see now well, the, more focus on technique, exor- yeah. you know, exercise programming, depending on who the coaches are. But well, what more we're focus finding is people at the top they understand this. Mm-hmm. The cream of the crop, they, they you know, the people that um, you know, especially in the games that you know are are kicking ass the most. They understand that you know the specialization is something that you know we like it they need to, to, to influence and change the community as a whole. Like everybody needs to kind of, you know, do things differently. And, and, and you're seeing this, you're seeing like, you know, people starting to think differently. So we just want to help to foster that. I just don't, I don't, sub, I don't subscribe to any one fucking modality. Yeah. That's the thing. None. Fuck them all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck CrossFit. Fuck them all. They're, they're, I, why would you subscribe to one way of trans? Like, like the same thing I feel about diets. diets. Yeah. People who subscribe to one way of eating or one way of training, that's fucking elementary. There's benefits to all of it, There's been, and there's drawbacks to all of it. I mean, I'm a guy who is a pro bodybuilder. I talk shit about bodybuilding. Right. There's so much bad stuff with it, but there's some good things, too. 
And that's really what the show has always been about is exposing that. It's just, it's really rough for people to fucking swallow because everyone's on the fucking train right now. Everybody's so excited about it because everyone's talking about it and it's on its growth. So yeah, we look weird because we're coming out saying bad things about it, but because nobody else wants to, everyone wants to jump on the, everyone wants to jump on bandwagon. People forget that though. I am not a bandwagon guy. They forget how much we challenge bodybuilding as well. Right. It's like, it's it's equal. Yes. I mean, come on. I even think it's more. It's probably even more, yeah. Yeah, you guys talk, We and- I think we do that because we know because I, I was know. A- and the other thing too is I know. I mean, I lived in that world in yeah. terms of my training and whatever. <laughs> right. you know, that was how I focused. It's, on it. it's to me, it's so easy, right? I look at my career and I think like, how many total lives have I touched? Like, so how many total clients have ever came to me that I've gave advice for nutrition and working out? And I ask myself, okay, so let's just say the a round number for argument's sake is a thousand, but it's probably more than that. Thousand people. I have talked to and helped in training over my entire 15 year career. Out of that thousand, Adam, what percentage of those do I feel fit in the in the fit in a category where they could be or should be in a training like a CrossFitter or training at a CrossFit type of facility? How many of those people would I recommend to do a circuit based training pra- training program like that? And I can't say more than 10%. Mm-hmm. I can't say more than 10%. It's for sure for me yep. that this is me speaking my personal experience <laughs> of helping normal ass people. Less than ten percent of them would I think even have the prerequisites to even be training in that type of a fashion. So if I'm talking to the masses on this show, knowing damn well that a majority of you have no fucking business in there, and I got no problem standing behind that because I've been doing this for a really long time. Now that's not to say that whoever's listening to this right now that's offended by it. Maybe you're somebody who fits in that 10%. Maybe you are a fucking super athlete. Maybe you got incredible mechanics. Maybe you love the shit out of the programming and it works really well for your body and you're not doing a bunch of damage to yourself. Guess what? That's cool. You fit in that 10%. I'm not talking to all of you. I'm talking to the majority of people and a majority of the people, they have not put in the work to be doing exercises like a snatch or a clean. No, man. Or, or they just are not there. You know how long they're learned- not going to get there in fucking the first month of intro training for your CrossFit no, box either. Do you know either. how long it no. takes to learn how to do a snatch properly for the average person? Like a year? Yeah, at least. Like it takes a long time to learn how to do that exercise. Do you guys think the hype surrounding CrossFit has started to... It big feels time, like it's dying, it's died dying down. down. Big time. Yeah. Yep. Big time dying I down. I think they've hit their. They might have hit their. And peak. even all the even the guys in the top of it know that too. We talk to them all the time. They they know what's happening is mm-hmm. er, every Jane or Joe saw that there was a way to make money opening these boxes, and so they're on every corner, and the cream is rising to the top now. The guys that are been in fitness for ten plus years, by the way, okay, off air agree with everything we're saying. Even the even the biggest CrossFit fucking guys that's uh, attached themselves to it and have ten gyms or more agree with the same problems that we talk about right here. The only difference is that's their business and they got to make money doing it. So they're trying to solve that problem every day. Yeah. We're just trying to let you know as a consumer that buyer beware what you're signing up for and that that may not be the best thing for you. There's probably something. In fact, there's probably something out there that is better for your body and to figure that out. And there is not one Mm. one way of training or one way of you guys see you guys see orange theory now hitting that. That same way. No, no. Orange Theory is still on a rocket. No, show. I don't think they're they're they've crested yet, but it sounds feels like they're the oh, next. Oh, hundred percent. They yeah. will. Hundred yeah. percent. There's no doubt in my it's mind. It's funny because I never heard the well, name. Well when you when okay, here's the deal. When you understand the science, okay, behind something like that, you get it. All the bells and the whistles and the gimmicks don't close me on it being long term, staying around forever. It just won't. Because you know why? Somebody else will come around with something more gimmicky, more cool, more fun for less money mm-hmm. that's like it or but different it, that's bound to happen mm-hmm. and that it'll just be this constantly competing for something that's really not revolutionary they they have attached themselves to epoch are you kidding me yeah that science <laughs> yeah. is fucking so yeah. old and dead like mm-hmm. they, they, we've already seen enough studies on that to prove there's not that much of a difference between it. so it's so but they if you attach yourself to something a science like that and you've completely built a brand around that by coloring it a certain way and putting heart rate monitors on somebody sure I think a lot of people that are gravitating are the same people that gravitate towards CrossFit. They love the competitive competitive atmosphere. They love the energy they of it. They just want group. something safer. They like yeah. yes, they feel it's a little bit safer. You they have the intimate value of it's almost like I have a personal trainer because I'm only sharing them with 15 other people, so it's not quite 
like it's a huge group or like he doesn't see me because it's in a big gym. I feel like I get to talk to Adam and he's kind of my coach, but I don't have to pay for him for $150 an hour. Those are the people that are that are driving to these facilities. But when they start to look at the percentages, how many of these people are actually seeing long-term results? Like they actually got in the best shape of their life and they maintain that for the rest the of their life. The maintaining part. When you look at the increase in injuries on both CrossFit and Orange Theory, it's ridiculous. Because when you do these type of movements that your body is not ready or capable of doing and you do them repetitively and you do them in a high intensity fashion, you're looking for, it's a recipe for disaster. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where we. I'm off my soapbox yeah, now, dude. Was, you got me all fired up. No problem. Problem. We, haven't talked, we haven't talked about CrossFit <laughs> in, a, in, <laughs> a while, in a while. In a while. Next up is from Peyton Cannon. Any tips for shin splints rehab? He works in law enforcement and serves in the military, so his days off are limited to one or two days at a time. Mm. Shin splints are a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, they probably one of the most common. I used to get them a lot. Did you really? Yeah, and I'm preventing them is the way to go. Right. The, the, I yeah. don't get them at all anymore. Yeah. And the biggest game changer for me was ankle mobility. Combat mm-hmm. stretch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Ankle mobi- addressing ankle mobility completely mm-hmm. changed the game for mm-hmm. me. Completely. Um, and I did my whole life as a kid because I played basketball, played soccer, and I just thought this was came with the territory. Man, that hard surface. Yeah, I remember practicing on when in Chicago when it would get cold and like the the ground got really hard. Oh my god, it was painful. You get these shin splints and run around and practice, and once you get them, man, it's it's a, it's a monster to get rid of them. What's funny about you know shin splints is because I the way we used to treat them back in the day was. Rest, you know, ice, put, you know, tape around your calf or whatever and your ankle and then, you know, hope it gets better. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they never do. Shin splints are just the result of poor recruitment pattern on muscle imbalance, just yeah. like most re-route chronic it. problems. Mm-hmm. Now, back in the day- It's like golfer's elbow in your shin. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Back in the day, you'd go and say, I have shin splints. They'd be like, oh, maybe your shoes are just worn and we need to get you better <laughs> shoes. Or yeah. for, for reals, this yeah. was like, in fact, if you- Get yourself some Dr. Scholl's. In fact, Does Dr. Scholl's still exist? Yeah. Of course. Yep. Kill they the game. gels. Yep. Yes. Yeah, Feels good. Gels. Wow. Uh, God, I think of that. Because, uh, you know, till this day, in fact- if you Google shin splints, they'll put on there, you know, poor bad shoes is one of the causes, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, one of the easiest fixes I ever found for clients, and I kind of, you know, uh, stumbled upon this. And after I learned the science, it, it makes perfect sense why it worked. But people would tell me, I have shin splints, Sal. I can't do lots of walking or I can't do lots of running or hiking. What do I do? And I just looked and said, okay, the pain is in the front of your shin, obviously. Let's just strengthen your tibialis muscle and see what happens. And it fucking worked so well. Like, I don't think I had a single person who came to me, because shin splints are super common. Mm-hmm. I don't think I had a single person who came to me with shin splints that didn't that it didn't fix their problem. Mm-hmm. Just strengthening the tibialis. So the tibialis muscle is on the front of the shin. It's the muscle that lifts your foot and your toes. Um, so it's the opposite of your calf muscle, which points your toes. And what you want to do is you can stand on, you can actually do this on a flat surface and just lift your feet up off the floor so you're balancing your heels, drop your feet back down, and just repeat that for reps. Oh, do, do 50, ta- 50 taps. I used to do like, a, so one of the things I would have clients do is like between squats, if they had shin splints, like what you're talking about, aside from combat stretching and working on ankle mobility, they and I'd throw it in their routine, just normal. They would do a squat or do a leg press, do a machine exercise, whatever, and then right afterwards they'd sit down and they would just do 50 taps where I make them lift their toes mm-hmm. as high as they can with their heel on the ground 50 times. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You'll no, be, they'll do it. Yeah, they'll be on fire. And yep. then before you know it, you'll, you'll start to train that and you'll strengthen it. We just don't ever train that. Nope. It's just not a... Comp- There's no... Where do no, you go? I where, know. Where, where right. do you, where's you the really exercise have to for focus on that. Actually, right. the reason why combat stretch... One of the reasons why combat stretch is so effective isn't... Sure, part of it is that you're stretching the soleus uh, muscle because no, you're the main up. thing is you're getting connected yeah, to the tibia. That's, that's, that that's part the main where reason. We're that, lifting that, our toes because when you do the yeah, exactly when you do the combat stretch, you're supposed to stretch into it, but then lift the toes up, mm-hmm, and it's right. that, and you'll feel it. You'll feel it light up the whole shin. You start doing that, and then I, I almost everybody have completely eliminated shin splints. I wish somebody taught me that. I know because I had them as a if kid. I had that in my arsenal. Oh, life would have been so much better. It's right. it's uh, it's practice. actually uh, no joke. It's a it's an easy fix. Like if you have shin splints right now, you take a little bit of time off and you do those tibialis exercises and combat stretch where you're connecting to your tibialis. 
within a very short period of time. I'd have clients that would do that, and within a week, they're like, no more shin splints. This, including many more uh, exercises for your ankle and every other joint in your body, is in our Prime Pro. So that's an, another. This is another example of. You know, if you if we were to be you automating want these this. tools in your toolbox, right. yeah, that's the place to go. Man. And if you don't if you don't have the money to afford a program like that that you can utilize forever, you can go to the YouTube channel and you can search because within there we've already given out a ton of these different exercises and movements that will help this for sure. Now I'll say this with uh, with pain, here's a good rule of thumb: if you injured yourself, that's something that needs time to heal. If something just hurts uh, over a long period of time. It's usually a vast majority of time. It's the result of chronic uh, d- dysfunction, chronic muscle impa- imbalance, or recruitment pattern dysfunction. So the fix isn't necessarily Quick. rest. In fact, if you just rest pain, like oh my shoulder gets sore when I work out, um, and you didn't you don't remember actually hurting it, it just kind of aches, and you rest it, it'll feel better, but you'll come right back when you go back to working out. So when if you have this kind of pain, identify the imbalance that's causing it. Identify the and all of us have it. Like if you even if right now you don't hurt, think of the parts of your body that uh tend to bother you when you're working out really hard. Like everybody has it, right? Like, oh, it's my left shoulder or it's my knee or it's my, you know, my low back or my SI joint, whatever. Think of those areas that tend to bother you. Those are signals telling you that there's a recruitment pattern issue. If you address those and you fix the recruitment pattern, not only will you reduce or eliminate that pain where it never comes back, but your performance will go through the fucking roof. Because what you need to understand is before that pain happens, before you get shin splints, before I get low back pain, even if I have no pain, I still have that dysfunction. And that dysfunction is taken away from my performance. It means that I'm not as strong as I can be, which means I can't build as much muscle as I can build or burn as much fat as I can burn. So indirectly, but directly, uh, correctional exercise done properly gives you way better results even if you don't necessarily have an impending type of pain uh, or injury. So, And one of, the, one of the messages I get most from people who do correctional exercise or like to do the Prime Pro program is they'll go through it and then they'll go back through their workouts and they're like, I didn't realize they'd get so much stronger. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They don't understand that that is one of the main side effects of working on these things. Next question is from Funky Spuds. Ooh, yeah, Funky Spuds. <laughs> I'm having trouble with the last 4 or 5% of stubborn body fat. I'm trying out ketosis for fat loss and other health benefits and wondering if I should work with a calorie deficit or if just maintenance calories in ketosis is enough time to back out time to back out and do a, a little mini bulk and then go right back into your your deficit if you're if you're at a deficit yeah, this is a really tough question to really answer without knowing like where's your calories right now sure. how long have you been currently dieting right now did you just start uh the ketogenic diet like there's a lot of variables here that would change my ad- advice because you're saying go the other direction, but what if this person is just now really starting yeah, I'm, to diet? Yeah, I'm assuming when I heard this question, I'm assuming it's somebody who's been who's lost like 15 pounds already, been in a deficit for a little while, doing cardio, doing now weights. Now wants to press stuff. harder in the deficit. And they're like, okay, it's the last, because it make, it reminds me of like, I've had these clients, right? They're like, okay, the last 10 pounds I can't get off. Yeah. I've lost 30. So I gotta go more extreme. Yeah, I'm eating 1,500 calories or whatever. I'm doing all this working out and just these last 10 won't come off. What do I do? And your answers are either make your metabolism or boost your metabolism or cut calories even more. And I always, I typically will venture to boost the metabolism because keep cutting your calories and keep upping your exercise. That sucks and it's hard to maintain. Right. It really depends on where they're at, though. I mean, if you're if you are in a place right now where you 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 know and you know your body better than any of us, right? So if you know that you're in a low, what you would consider low calorie. And you're st- and you're st- and you're stuck at this body weight, then absolutely I agree where Sal's going. But if you've just really started dieting and you're still consuming a healthy amount of calories, then by all means restrict. And and that's going to be different for every person. Like if if I if this is a female and you have you're you're consuming right now eighteen hundred plus calories, we still have room that we could either either one restrict some more calories or two increase your movement. I would always go rather that way. So I typically. You know, when I normally, if I'm switching the diet, like going from whatever you were doing before to now doing ketogenic diet, 
I normally tell them to stay in a, in a maintenance or not a non-deficit and then just create a little bit more movement. The difference between you ch- changing the, the food and you also moving a little more should result in you dropping another percentage. But Sal's also 100% right. If you've been in a, a deficit or and trying to lose body fat for more than three, four, five plus weeks, and you actually haven't done like a, sh- a short little surplus for a couple of days, um, I would recommend that. So there's a lot of variables that come in here that would change my my advice. I remember the first time I I figured out that that would that I that actually worked. I was um, trying. I don't remember where I was going. I think I was going to go to Italy on vacation, and I wanted to get really lean. So for a pretty long period of time, because I used to bulk in the winter, so I used to get all really heavy, and then I'd try and die down. So I had to lose something like 25 pounds of body fat every year. I would do this every year. So I, but at this time I said, I'm going to go even further and get even leaner. So I went in this deficit. I did this whole nutrition plan. I did my workouts and, uh, I got down to a particular, you know, I don't remember how, what potty fat percentage I was at, but I got, you know, maybe nine, 8% and I looked pretty good, but I kept pushing to try to get leaner and it just kind of wasn't happening. It took really long. And then I had a weekend where I said, you know what, uh, I've got, you know, a few weeks before going on this trip. I'm just going to enjoy myself and just eat a lot of calories this weekend. And that's what I did. I ate a shit ton of calories. It turned into about five days of eating a lot of calories. And then when I went back to, you know, how I was, how I was eating before, I was like, it blew me away that all of a sudden I got lean really fast. And I remember thinking like, this is crazy. I just went, you know, on this, you know, five day, you know, my calories were higher now all of a sudden I'm eating less and like I was before and that extra body fat or whatever just came right off and really it was just boosting my metabolic rate. Right. I mean this is why I you know this is one of the reasons why we advocate for mini cuts and mini bulks. You know rather than being you know t- eight or twelve weeks of straight deficit, you're probably better off doing this you know two weeks on one week kind of off and kind of undulating your calories. In fact, uh, studies are now showing that that mitigates uh, the metabolic adaptation that comes from being in a calorie deficit. Because when your calories are low for uh, you know a certain period of time, your metabolic rate will start to adapt, and you'll actually start to burn less calories, which is a shitty place to be in when you're already eating little calories. You're doing lots of cardio, and this is, I think, where the term stubborn comes from, where you're just like, "What is going on? Why can't I get?" any leaner i'm already eating so little i I also think to be uh keep things in perspective too and be very realistic about your goals and what you're trying to accomplish i have no idea where this person's body fat percentage currently is right now um i'm assuming you're trying to get what if it's like i'm at 33 percent. right right right. the last four percent won't come off right right if if it's if you're really if you're lean already and you're trying to get shredded um it's tough i mean each time i i found myself and i kind of like i would break it up in like five percent like a quadrant, like if you know, twenty percent is like the worst body fat percentage I ever had, and then if I get down to fifteen, then I get down to ten, and then I get down to five, and it each five percent or so, four or five percent that I would reduce body fat wise, took a whole new level of commitment, you know, and or sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So you know, and and it and the reason why the last four or five is so challenging is there's less room for error. When you are a thirty percent body fat and you're trying to lose five percent body fat. You can still get away with a Snickers bar every once in a while. You can still fuck around and get pizza in your diet every now and then. You could still do a lot of things in your diet and get away with it. And because you you have such a high percent of body fat, you still got so much total body fat to lose that you could still be losing body fat and still getting away with some you know higher calorie foods and maybe some less days in the gym. Where as you start to sharpen up and you get lean, this is what made you know competing so fun for me. You know, all the way till the show date, like your level of discipline is cons- consistently increasing. In fact, when I would start a diet, I remember I each each two weeks, I would always challenge like this is a new level of commitment. I mean, sometimes that new level of commitment meant more movement, more volume in my exercise. Sometimes that level of commitment meant sacrificing more, where I would allow certain things to be in the diet that now I'm restricting from. So. Keep that into perspective and keep that in mind as you as you think about what you're trying to do is, you know, be realistic with yourself that, OK, you're wanting to get this next level of getting shredded with that next level comes the next level of commitment. Dude, what used to trip me out is when I get down to like the mid high to mid like seven. Once I got down to like seven, six percent body fat, 
a half a percent was very visible. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, I would drop, like, if I'm at 15%, I drop a half a percent. You can't tell. You get down to like seven, six, five. You drop a half percent. I would wake up in the dude. I'd look in the mirror and be like, "Oh shit, I got way leaner." Right. Then I'd you know underwater way or whatever. Absolutely. Half a percent. It just changed a half a percent. And the 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 reverse is true to that too. So if you make one little mistake, it's like you wake up the next day and you're like, "Fuck, I look like I got fat overnight." Like you literally feel like you whatever you just ate that you know was out of your caloric maintenance. All of a sudden, it just sticks to your body because you are. You, you got to think if someone is at, like when I get five, sub 5% body fat for a show, I mean, what's 5% of somebody who weighs 220 pounds? I mean, I'm less, I got less than 10 pounds of total fat on my body and you want some, some of it still there. So there's not a lot of room for you. You, yeah. you, you add a little bit and you jump right up real quick. Do you remember um, some of the, like how your body would start to react once, was there a point where you felt like, oh, my body does not like this right now? Do you remember what that number was? Yeah, I want it was sub five. Sub five. Um, I I feel like I can. I can. Uh, my body's very comfortable. Nine to left. Now, mind you, too. Th- I believe this changes because I've watched it change with myself. Um, I I will used to be very comfortable around eleven to thirteen percent, and then when I got a lot leaner and started kind of getting and and keeping myself sub ten percent, I got very comfortable with being nine to eleven percent body fat. Uh, now seven to 10 is like this really comfortable range for me where I feel like I don't need to track anything, just be mindful of what I'm mm-hmm. consuming and what I'm doing and staying to my regimen. I can maintain that body fat percentage. Anything sub five for me is, is for it's, I, it's like a sport, you know, to me, I'm addressing, I'm looking at my body fat percentage, like a game. Like this is, I, like, I actually noticed like legit psychological changes. Like once I got, I got down to a certain point and I started dreaming about food. Oh yes, yes. Fucking weird. Oh man, man. my every every show, the last and the, it used to be a, a funny joke that Katrina and I was would she would ask me like, "Are you getting the food dreams yet?" Oh, so that's a legit. Oh, that's thing. a total. I never had food. I've never in my Bro, life. Bro, who the fuck dreams about food? I've never. Well, people do. Some people. Some people do. I right? dream of Twinkies. Sometimes. I've never had dreams of food until I lived in that long of a. Caloric and it feels deficit. like you're having. You know, you have a sex dream where you're like, oh, God damn. I wake. Man. I'd wake like up that. and all I want is like this big stack of pancakes or something. Yep, it's just yep. my body is. The, and I got cold as fuck. Just want to fuck them. That was. <laughs> whoa, whoa, <laughs> wow. dude. Whoa, dude. Just Calm just down. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> just as like I have them. Yeah. I, uh, I, I got cold as hell. I'd get really, really cold. Um, my mouth would get dry. Like a bunch of weird shit would happen. Yeah. And then after, because I got, I don't know how, I think, I don't remember. I didn't get, I didn't test myself at the very end, but I got pretty shredded for, what, what I, <clears throat> but I remember after that, I'm like, cool, I'm done. I'm going to go eat a bunch of food. Made myself sick as hell. Like yeah. my body could not yeah, assimilate all that food. You're, well, you're, what I think it is is your receptors are just. It's like you flushed everything and cleaned every because you've been in a deficit. You're so, you're no more body fat. I feel like everything is just ready to absorb whatever you're going to put in your mouth. That was probably for me the the greatest learning experience because even though I understood the science and I uh, and I knew nutrition going into it, when I started to get to a point where I was so fucking lean that the the slightest bit of any food, caffeine, anything that I took, I could I mean I could feel what it did to my body like significantly. It really opened my eyes to like wow, we become so oversaturated with so much shit that we put in our bodies that you don't even like we like when I when I eat my meal today, you know, as long as it's a normal meal, I won't really feel it. I won't like. Oh, you feel it when you. Oh, like wow! That. I've you, you watch your veins before your eyes poof, start to come out. Yeah, I you it's I really weird. I could tell the difference between a meal that had thirty grams versus sixty grams of carbohydrates. Like the, the same carbs, they could come from the same source. Just the amount of it would make a night and day difference to how I felt, how I looked. Like when I started to see that, I realized like, whoa, we really do just flood our body with shit so much and totally dull these these senses that our body these all these sensors sensors that our body has and signals that it tries to give us to let us know you're on the right track you're not doing so well that was too much that wasn't enough we're numb yeah we're numb to it we're very numb to it and i didn't know that i didn't know that to that extent until i went to that level and it it's really opened my eyes uh on how everything really affects mm, us cool Check it out. If you want a free workout programmed by Mind Pump, just go to YouTube. We have a 30-day workout all programmed out. 
Uh, I don't know what day we're on tomorrow when this airs. I think like day 12 or something like that, day 11. But you can go all the way back, watch the first day, follow along with the workouts, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications so you get notified every time we post a free video. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.